So we're gonna be heating this inner bearing up to about 200 degrees. That was a little scary. We're gonna start slapping the parts back into here. How do you think it's gonna go? What up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I've got another good video for you today. We are gonna be restoring this transmission. A lot of gears, a lot of small pieces. We have gotten a bunch of stuff in the mail. Some pieces for the transmission, some wheel pieces, parking pieces. So we're definitely staying cranking on this Jeep and I am determined to get this thing back on the road very soon. Before we jump right in, I did wanna say a huge thanks to all of you for supporting this channel and watching these videos. If you're not subscribed, consider hitting that subscribe button. It helps me a ton and I'm gonna keep bringing you all more content. Hopefully you all caught the last video where we got the inside of this Jeep completely painted with this Raptor liner here. It turned out super awesome. I'm excited to get the dashboard cleaned up and painted at some point. All this mud definitely been driving me crazy. The main focus of this video is gonna be getting all of this transmission rebuilt back together and get that part done. I am super excited to cross this one off the list. Now, previously we went through all these gears and put new synchro rings on them, but when I was watching my rebuild video, apparently they run some sandpaper across these. That way these gears spin and bite a little bit harder. So in order to make sure this thing is absolutely perfect, we're actually gonna be retaking this apart, doing the proper sanding, assembling it and then we'll know without a trace of a doubt this thing is good to go. Also massive shout out to Gearbox Video. His video on how to disassemble and rebuild this transmission is absolutely amazing. So if you want to take this on for yourself look up Gearbox Video how to rebuild a T176 and really it's been easy so far. Let's see how this thing goes back together. All right, I've got a game-changing pro tip just for you. I just had to take this thing apart for the second time, and I think I got it apart in probably a tenth of the time as previously. So once you've done one of these, it really is a lot easier to do again. So if you ever want to take something like this on, hang in there and you'll knock it out. I bought the super attractive head mount. So if you guys are enjoying more of the personal view of things, let me know down in the comments. I hope it looks cooler than the time lapse. Let's keep going. Well, I took the plunge. It's super scary, but everything is off this main shaft right here. Everything looks so much better. So shiny here, way more shiny than it was before. There was definitely some nasty oil buildup, just like stubborn to get off. So I'm glad I got that all cleaned up. And then I'll be soaking everything down in WD-40 as I put it back together. That's what the guy in the video said to do. That way everything's protected and we're not gonna have any rust or anything since they're pretty clean right now. So with that, let's go ahead and follow the video, start doing our little sanding and putting it all back together.
That really wasn't bad, getting these little retainer clips in here, just kind of put them in, made sure they were distributed as far as they could. Nice little action there. Like I said, I covered it in a little bit of WD-40, but I think that's what we're looking for. So those are good to go. Now I've got my gears laid out here, and this is what I didn't do last time. This edge right here gets a little worn just from dirt, and if I take my nail here, I can actually feel a little bit of friction there as I run my nail through it. So he says to use some 800 grit sandpaper just really quick to go over it. And then he said this gear needs to be able to lock. So as it gets pushed on here, it should start to turn the gear. So we're gonna hit it with some sandpaper, see how well this kind of rolls on it afterwards. And then he said that should reduce any binding that could go on in the transmission. back together perfectly. Well, I guess I can't get too excited. It hasn't been tested, but check this out. Everything just looks good. I was able to spin everything. I was able to spin things locked up as they should. All the moving pieces seem to be working perfectly. So I think it's good to go. I got to put this off to the side. And then I think the next step is to assemble some of these little gears here. Hopefully you all remember these little guys. These are called needle bearings. And apparently they all came in my rebuild kit here, but we're actually gonna be packing grease inside of the gear here and then placing those needle bearings around here. And then the grease kind of helps hold them in place. It's a special type of grease that keeps everything in place. So we're gonna go ahead and start knocking that out. And then I think we're gonna start putting gears back in the case. So it's coming up quick. Let's see how it goes. Everything's coming out well. Got all the needle bearings in both sides with the washers on there. We put these over here. Same with this one. Got all the needle bearings in both sides, washers on as well. The grease definitely held everything in really, really nice. And I do have some leftover needles here, but the guy said in the video that's pretty normal. So let's hope I got them all in there. I did check like five times just to make sure everything was tight. And then we got our new reverse idler gear in the mail here, as you can see, all nice and new. And then this guy had all those chipped teeth. So we'll make sure to put that baby on and it should be a million times better. All right, here we go. It is installation time. I'm gonna clean out the inside just a smidge more just to make sure it's as clean as I can get it and then we're gonna start slapping the parts back into here how do you think it's gonna go I have all the parts prepped and ready I hope this is as easy as it's been let's get in it
All right, it's been a few hours and I could not be happier with how this is going together. Everything's going in really, really well. All the gears kind of stayed together as I was shuffling everything. I got both of these main shafts in, which are holding some of the lower gears in place. This guy's still pretty movable, but I'm about to do something pretty crazy. Using a blowtorch to heat up some bearings to get on the transmission shaft. If you'll remember when I was taking this apart, I was really struggling to get the bearings off the front of the transmission case. And that's because they're very, very tight to this shaft over here. Let me grab one of the bearings here and I'll show you. Ooh, look at that. Those things are so nice. Anyway, so this is supposed to go here, but very, very tight. There's no way we're getting that on unless we have a press. But the video I'm watching, he actually uses a blowtorch to heat up the inner ring on this bearing. And obviously heating things makes them expand and that just gives it enough room to get on the actual shaft here. So we're gonna be heating this inner bearing up to about 200 degrees and then we'll be slapping it on there. I really, really hope it hammers right into place. Let's get after it. Let's cross our fingers. Let's hope it goes well. I'm not gonna lie, that was a little scary. Got it on though, check that out. Hopefully all the snap rings go in well. I tried to line everything up as best I could. Look at that, it's coming along. snap rings are reinstalled now. We had a snap ring on the outside and the inside on both the front and the back shafts. Those are all in. Snap rings are horrible to work with. I was also using the wrong tool. Apparently you don't want the tool with the rounded tip. They have one with a flat tip and it's called like a lock ring remover. That's what I needed. That's why these were so, so awful to do. But they're all in. Everything's still looking really good. Although I did watch ahead and I did notice a small problem. I believe this needs to be on the transmission. When we unbolted the transfer case from the transmission, we unbolted it at this piece. But I think we probably should have unbolted it at these bolts. So we may need to pull this off, clean it up really, really well, and then get that installed back on the transmission with the proper seals. took a quick stab at cleaning this thing off and oh my goodness, there was so much junk all over it. And I did a decent job. I might clean it a little bit more before I put it in the actual Jeep. But for now, I got all the gasket cleaned off this side. Then on this side, I cleaned it. I'll probably wipe it out a little bit more. But now we can go ahead and change these O-rings and get it mounted to the transmission. flying right along here got our new seal in here a new seal in here we already assembled this on top of this so i think the plan is going to be to coat this thing in a bunch of gasket maker put the paper gasket on put a little bit more on and then we'll screw down this to here i think we're getting close
I know all your secrets, but you tell me stupid lies. Oh, when you think you can escape now and got it all just figured out, you can fake it through the ceiling to the rooftops. Check this out. I was just going through the gears and making sure everything sounds and looks really good. So we got neutral right here. So with it in neutral, I should be able to do these side to side. Looks good. So now let's drop it into first gear up here. All right, that's first gear. So it should be really hard to turn that front shaft with the rear shaft because obviously first gear, this is gonna spin a lot faster than the rear one. So we're good to go. Second gear here, good. Back to neutral, third gear easier fourth gear easiest so that's perfect we got neutral one two three four the stick, stick feels pretty firm here so i don't think anything's loose in here i think we're good to go i definitely need to install a new reverse indicator just to make sure we're good i don't want to take any chances with this guy so we'll go ahead and get a new one installed but other than that man this thing turned out really really good check it out transmission rebuilt that was a doozy but i am so happy to have that done it's probably one of the more technical things that i have to get done i was a little unsure of honestly if i had to give this a rating from one to ten i would say it was a six or a seven if you've ever done some pretty complex Lego builds. It's basically like building Legos. Again, with the video made everything so much easier. I used every part out of that rebuild kit, but now I know that transmission is going to be 100% ready to rock. But that about concludes this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Join us on getting this thing back on the road. In the next video, we're going to start laying out this huge wiring harness I bought. Should be really exciting. Until next week, enjoy your week, and we'll see you in the next one.